It's time for the Take a Seat podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Howell. Please take a seat. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Take a Seat TV. This is Kevin Howell, your host on the show today. And we are interviewing an amazing entrepreneur this morning, a young lady who's built uh, some <laughs> phenomenal businesses. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about her life and her journey as an entrepreneur. So let, without further ado, this is Aleta. <laughs> Welcome, Aleta. Hello, Kevin. You had me as a young lady. <laughs> I can't receive it. <laughs> well, everything under 85 to me is a young lady. So. <laughs> Oh, now I don't know if that's a compliment anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, it is. And let's welcome, yeah, take a seat. We've known each other for a while. It's great to have you on the other side today. Normally you interview other people. Today we're interviewing you, so it's all about you this morning. Oh, thank you, Kevin. It's so cool to be here. I, I really feel honored, so thank you for thinking of me. Good. Alita, so we're going to start quickly on, a, on a, just an introductory question. If you have to choose three words to describe yourself, what would that be? Oh, wow. Um, loud, passionate, <laughs> and too, too much, too, too busy, too okay. everything. That's why my name is Aleta. Huh? Okay, what does Aleta mean? Aleta is like te feel, te, te. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's why I had a te for my you you what, It was a let and then you added the te. Yes. Okay, yes. I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Aleta, tell me your business drive. Where did this all start? Where do you think it comes from? Yes, you Kevin. It's amazing how um, I thought about our interview earlier today because I was like, what? What am I going to tell you? I, Because I, I didn't study anything in this line. I didn't study business or anything like that. I, was, I mean, mm, not at all. Never in my life, if you ask me as a young girl, where do you see yourself? I thought this is where I'm going to end up. But um, but yet I was in primary school and I made scrunchies, which is now so fashionable again. I remember making scrunchies and selling them for five rand at school and making a hundred rand and thinking that's very cool. So it, it must have been somewhere in the genes. My mom would tell you it's definitely not from her. Because she went not. no, she, she went to the Indian Plaza um, when I was young in Joburg, and she would buy a bunch of stuff to go and sell at our house. She she literally made a little store, and then she people would come and say, "Oh, that's nice," and she would give it to them. Like, "Oh, do you like it? You can you can have it." So so she okay, definitely so not the doing, <laughs> doing things for free was her thing. Yes, but she's blessed because of that, because she's a giver. Absolutely. But I was like, no, you must charge money. You must make money. So I, I don't know. But apparently it is a genetic thing because my one child, if I ask him to do anything, he was like, how much do I get from that? How much will I get? So it is it is genetic. But I can I can honestly not tell you. I think it was it was um, it was very organic and natural. It was the one thing led to the other, led to the other. And I became more confident and 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 realize that I actually have something to do and to give. And that would just catapult me in the next thing and then in the next thing. And now can I just stop it? Right. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to look at your brands just now. I was so shocked when you started sending me the brands yesterday and I looked at all these businesses. I'm thinking, where do you find all the time for all of this? So it's going to be exciting when we look at that. But tell me about the, the initial business idea. I mean, just that, I mean, uh, people that don't know you, um, uh, you are in the fashion and styling industry and many other things as well. But how did the initial idea for that come about? Wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, started out studying journalism because I wanted to be on TV. That was my my heart's desire. Yeah, you're in, on TV, Aleta. And now I am on TV. On Kevin's TV. <laughs> so, so I, I loved presenting. I remember we bought a video camera when I was 16. And I would, I mean, coming from Bitbunk, I would be at the waterfront in Cape Town with a brush in my ear as my mic. And I would interview my wow. family like, now nah, we are here at the harbor. Um, so I thought I wanted to become a TV presenter or a newsreader. And right. went to 
journalism. So only when I was at university, I actually realized that I loved writing, but I didn't love factual writing. I hate research. It was so not my thing. I love creative writing and playing with words and, and making it funny and punny. Um, and then in my honors year at university, I started working at an insurance company. So it was my first official job. I mean, I did waitressing and I did, I did a lot of like teenage and student jobs to make money because I was never the lucky one that can just rely on a dad who's just going to throw up money at me no i had to absolutely work for what i wanted right and um and then when i started at the insurance company it, it literally started as like tally sales but soon realized that i i literally have i have a gift with working with people because i had so much favor in my job there um just immediately rose above the crowd like the rest i would i would if they gave me a target i will exceed the target i was just like the whole time i realized and then they started incentivizing us with money and i'm like i realized money is cool <laughs> i like money i can buy lots of clothes and um, and that would just drive me even more to just give my best and bring my a game so i think i i learned a lot of um, amazing work ethic in the corporate industry and i was there for seven years where i went from one department started a new department I would start it and move to the new department and start something and 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 um and now if I go back to that company they are massive and we literally started together it was it's actually wow. incredible wow. Um, but during that time I met Heinz and then uh, when we were married for a year we went overseas where he was in a musical and I I I could still do my job and I could go back to my corporate job they they were waiting for me and I just said uh, I I think it was God's way to get me out of that that rat race and that drive for money and that just uh, um because you could so easily get swallowed up in that industry of just driving yeah. in traffic every day it's and it's that mark your seal do it it's literally like seal do it and, um, and I knew it was not what I was made for even though I was good at it it wasn't what I was made for and um, right. and when I was overseas with Heinz every night when he was performing, I would be in a hotel room watching Style um, Style Network. Let me just quickly close my WhatsApps here, otherwise we're going to go crazy. Um, every style show possible, I would just like be watching makeover shows, but never ever thought that it would be a career. I loved it. I've always had a passion for for style, not necessarily fashion, but yes. uh, but I was just like it was in me. I. Even at university, my friends asked me to go shopping with him. So I knew I had it, but I was, it was uh, we doing that. Niemand doing that, Yes, yes. <laughs> and then when we got back from the States, I actually had a prophetic word that I was going to go into working with women and clothes and stuff. And I was like, that's cool because I could see myself doing it. And two or three weeks later, it was so quick after that, um, Heinz came back from Benelandet where he was on set and he said he met a girl who did the scores and she introduced me to the course and the rest is history. So I literally right. did the course, like I think four weeks later. Um, and after the course of becoming an image consultant, I immediately started my business. I just knew this is not it. I can my help mark. I can my airport crap. I must make a success out of this thing. Um, and I started at the bottom. I started doing consultations, but what, which is so the, the one thing about image consulting, which is so incredible, is I had in the twelve years that I've been doing it now, had so. Uh, many opportunities to actually do what I was made to do, like writing books about it, doing a TV show about it. So there, there are so many spheres in image consulting. It's not just the one-on-one -on -one consultation. There's corporates and groups and and blogging and influencing and styling shoots. So it's just amazing what you can do with with this. And then about um, how where are we now? 2021. About in 2016, I think the first time around. I had the opportunity to take over the company that trained me and we weren't in a we were wow. building a house wow. and it was just crazy and i just it wasn't the right time and then again or i don't know somewhere it came i think it came the first time 2014 and i said no thank you in 2016 it came again and i just knew i this knew in my spirit, this is the time and i didn't know how it was going to happen and how it was going to be possible but i just knew and then by the grace of god and by so many incredible things that happened in favor and just the good that the black of it um i i got to take over sa image academy which is um which is awesome and and once again never thought of myself as a trainer or a teacher and then found out that i actually love it and i'm good at explaining things to people because many people that have been trained by previous people would come and say oh my word now for the first time it actually makes sense so so it's just awesome that i was and and i am i feel so blessed that i'm able to be able to do so many of the things that i love to do and from the moment of taking over the company i i said to my partner at that stage she has um since 
not be not she's not my partner anymore i'm in it alone but i said let's make an app let's do an app where you can have your clients results at on hand because in the past and some companies still do it they have physical products that they have to take with them if they go shopping with the client or the client goes shopping afterwards that they have to have with them and what is the one thing you have with you all the time it's your phone so let's develop an app um and just also supernatural connections i i partnered with my brother who is also great in business my eldest brother i mean he was eight years ahead of me so we kind of missed one another at home and then now we are doing so many things together which is actually so incredible for our relationship and, and i mean they say don't do fat you are you are in family business <laughs> <You're> <laughs> about it. and um and now we're developing we, we we have the app already we are now in the process of launching a brand new app or, actually as a, a total separate entity um, and we are releasing it internationally next week so it's <laughs> so amazing much amazing yes. amazing and, and every now and then another idea comes up and then we'd like my my staff jokes with me they phone my iti guy and like we need another email address we need another website is that available is that available <laughs> wow love it love a typical serial entrepreneur yes i so, i believe so yeah Anita, so I heard a couple of things from your conversation. The first one, I, I heard purpose, and it's so important. The second thing, we're going to speak about that is timing. And the third thing you spoke about was mentorship. So let's just quickly, I don't want to elaborate on that quickly. So purpose, um, if you connect the dots to purpose, you said you, you you knew from a young age that you want to be on TV or you want to, you want to be a journalist. You spoke about yes. being at the waterfront. Um, yes. Can you now look back over your life? Can you see where you know it was pointed out to you where your skill sets are, where your gifting is, and what you need to connect to to do what you do today? Can you see that looking back? Absolutely. Um, okay. And you know what, Kevin, where, where this ties up with what you do so beautifully is it. I think so many people go through life without knowing what their purpose is, and that is just so sad. It mm. really, it, it, I, would, I would want to cry if I think about it. the fact that people die on a daily basis and they never did what they were made to do. They never found yes. out what made them yes. alive and passionate. I mean, you, all of us have that one thing, whether it is doing maths or whether it is like my, my team that came into my house and ordered, ordered everything for me. They are passionate about putting things in little boxes and freaking making it neat, which is awesome. There is something that you are passionate about and you are so amazing with helping people to get there. And I would so totally recommend everybody do Kevin's course where it, it helps you to unlock those. Oh my word. I didn't know the reason why I felt alive while I was doing this is that is actually what it is. It's, it's yep. passion, it's purpose. Yeah. It's why, what I was made for. So yeah. I, I mean, ever since I, I i wanted to do that obviously a lot of other things fell in place but i have my word this is this is actually my purpose my purpose is my calling is is working with women is inspiring people to get to their or to deal with issues i mean there's a long list of things but it, it is amazing how you look back over 20 years and it's like what i can see i can see the little road that i've traveled and how everything is connected and that it's not just with me it's it's there for everyone everybody has that available um and it is just important to get to that place of right. knowing why you are here because there is right. a reason why you are here absolutely and Alita, you speak so uh, um, eloquently about it. The purpose is that space where magic starts happening. And when I, when I look at your life and I see what you're doing, it looks like magic from the outside. And you know, people uh, are sometimes envious of that when they look at other people and they think, why does it come so easily for other people? But it's absolutely <laughs> just because it's your gifting and because it's such a natural thing for you to do. So it, it's beautiful to see. And you're such an example of someone who, who lives purpose. So well Thank done you. with that. Thank then a little, uh, around, around timing, timing is such an important concept for young entrepreneurs. I mean, people watching the show, wanting to start their business. You, we all have these great uh, grand ideas of grandeur of where we're going and what, what we want to build. But there's timing involved. As you said, there's, you know, there's this time and space for everything. Although there was an idea, there was timing involved. Uh, can you see that, that, that thread in your life as well where you have to wait for the right opportunity, even though you had the ideas? Sorry, you were muted. Somehow you 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 killed your mic. All right, we're just waiting for a letter to come back.
Oh, here we go. Here we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. I don't know what happened, but okay. Um, Kevin, Pardon. timing everything. It is absolutely everything. We, oh my word, is it not just like that? When you get a prophetic word or a promise from God or somebody says something to you, it has to have happened. Ack, oh my word. Like if I phone my IT guy, he's like, okay, by when do you need it? Last week. I am like that. I want things done and I want it done now. And I want results. Yes. I'm absolutely results driven. My poor staff, if I'm like, where's that, 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 and that? <laughs> I'm like, I want results. That was all said. But it doesn't work that way in life. I, right. If I right. look back and I think about the fact that I wanted to be on TV when I was 18 or 19 or 20 or 21. And eventually I had my TV show when I was like 34. And I was like, I would never have been able to do it. I had to learn the skill. I had to learn my subject. I had to know what I was talking about. If they had to give me a show at that stage, I would, I, I mean, I would have so drug market. It wouldn't have been right, good right, at all. Right, but right. you have to go through the learning process, the, the soy, soy diamond pressure shape. <laughs> and yes, there are people who go in TV at 18, but then it's what they were supposed to do if they are good at it. Right, right. And everybody's journey is differently. And, and I think the sooner we accept that and the sooner we realize we must stop comparing ourselves to other people, that is, I think, the, uh, the uh, pandemic of our time, not Corona, this freaking comparison, um, we would realize that your life is not my life and my life is not your life and we are not the same and we were all made for different things and for different seasons and if you are not going to be you and do what you were made to do we are all going to miss out on you it's just like Absolutely. that Absolutely. we Absolutely. need you and we need what you can contribute to the party whether it is doing my my books or Creating a website. I need you to do that. Right. So, um, so yes, timing is absolutely everything. And, and uh, it's wonderful looking back and seeing the hand of God and seeing, oh, wow, that couldn't have happened if that didn't happen first. And if I didn't meet that person at that, na -na, na -na 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 -na. so yes, it's where faith yep. comes in. Yep. You must trust that you are doing the right thing and you're on the right path and that it will work out as it should. Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth, you've got the, you've perfect, got the perfect entrepreneurial um, uh, personality, and that's that A-type personality where you can't wait on things. So how do you <laughs> deal with the frustration of having this vision of where you want to be and wanting it by tomorrow, and you actually know it's not going to happen by tomorrow? How do you deal with that and, oh, and put it down and just wait for the right time? <laughs> I buy took my tana. I think I think my husband plays an incredible key role because I would like yes we're gonna do this and go there and like he's like okay suck sorrow right bye don't go back with the so it helps me and without damping my enthusiasm which is awesome and my staff as well I'm like no launch date for the app is this and they're like don't give a launch date because right. rather under promise and over deliver because I, I will deliver. just like this is what we're going to do and i, I want to make it happen but they're like near yeah, starter so it is it is difficult um but i've also learned through years in business that things don't work out like you always want it so um take take a breather and that's probably why if i'm waiting for something else to develop i start something <laughs> That's why, that's why there's nothing, there's never nothing happening in my life. I can assure right. you that. Right. Yeah. Hey, so tell me about mentorship. How, how important has mentorship been for you? You spoke about your elder brother that's uh, a, an entrepreneur or business person and who's helped you over the years. How, how much, how powerful has that been in your life over the last couple Absolutely of years? Absolutely incredible. Um, I mean, I, I, I can't say that I, and I think it's probably necessary if I could have been sitting at your feet once a week or doing courses at a, at a, at a regular stage or timing in my life, it probably would have been amazing. I, I think I could have been a lot further than where I am. Um, and I think sometimes people are proud that they think they know everything and they don't need people to speak into their lives. But that, that, that's discipleship is somebody who's, who's been in the business for longer, who's stronger, who got further handing down the keys and telling you, okay, listen, this is what you need to do. So I'm doing it on a regular basis with my staff. I'm teaching them. I'm training them. They are being mentored by me, but I need to draw from somewhere. I mean, I don't know everything. My husband made it very clear this morning in the car. 
<laughs> when when we were driving behind, I saw him. I can him just imagine that conversation. <laughs> yes, and he did it, and I was like, I was like, you must break, and he's like, I didn't, I did not look away. You don't know everything, and you got it like that way. So I am very aware of the fact that I do not know everything. Right. And then I'm not always right, apparently, either. <laughs> right. But right. Um, so it is because what I've learned with Paul, my brother, with Paul, I would sometimes, in my personality, I am like, I, I would sort of make an email, yo, 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 let's do this, let's go. And <laughs> it's like, okay, let's just make That's it. That's the loud part, eh? That's the loud <laughs> part. <laughs> yes. Let's bring it in. Let's stop the emojis and the smiley faces and the 12 exclamation marks. Let's make it, you know, like sound like a business owner. Okay, okay. So it helps so much. I, yeah. I mean, two is better than one anyway. And yep. imagine if you have a whole team of people being able to speak into your life. Um, yep. So it, 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 you have to be humble enough to admit that you are open for mentorship and for somebody yep. to say, listen, maybe do this rather than that. Because yeah. um, 99% of the time, that's normally the right thing to do. Okay. So you spoke about pride and the reason that like pride is sometimes or most times the reason why people don't have mentorship. What, do you, what yeah. would you suggest to young entrepreneurs? How do they get over that pride? Like how do they just stop with that completely and decide I need help? Uh, um, it's amazing. We had this conversation at the table yesterday where we spoke to our children and we said to them, um, what was it? They asked me something and I said, listen, it's like, how do you know that, mom? I said, because I'm 41 and I know that and you are six or whatever you are. And, and we joked about the fact that one day you're going to realize you don't know everything and you're going to think, oh, my word, my parents were right. It's that whole thing where children think at one stage they know everything. And that's what we what we do in business as well. We, you come out of university, you're excited, you are amped up, you just want to freaking change the world. And I think it's a problem, especially under millennials, which is now the current generation of young entrepreneurs. And um, they want to change the world, but they don't necessarily want to put the work and the effort in. That's also one thing that I've seen in millennials, which is they, yeah. But it, it obviously takes hard work. That's another point. Oh, my word, you must be able to work hard. There's no end to you. It's not just going to fall in your hands. It's hard work. But to come back to pride, all of us need help. We weren't created to do anything alone, to be a, a one man show or an island. Um, and the sooner you realize it, the, the, the better it's going to go with you. So the sooner you realize that if your dad told you don't do that, maybe I should listen to my dad because he's wiser and he's older and he's been through things. And yes, I have, I have um, differed with my parents and said, no, I don't agree with that. And because I know that I have more experience in a certain area, but there are many areas in my life where I felt, oh my word, I so don't want to listen to you right now, but I'm going to, I'm going to do that because I have to honor my parents and they were right. So in, if in doubt, obey, because then you can right. blame them if it went wrong. Right. But obey them. Listen to the older generation who's been through it all, who yes. is also wiser. And yeah, it's just the right thing to do. <laughs> and it, it, it's so much easier when it is your parents and you have that value system where you respect yeah. your parents. But it, I think it's a bit more difficult when you have to choose a business leader around you. So, I yeah. mean, if, you, if young people look around them, they see business leaders, um, how, how do you think they should choose them? I mean, based on what? Because... I mean, you, you mentioned that you you want to look up to someone who's been been where you haven't been, you know, been through yeah. the, the come through the ranks of what you're doing. Besides yeah. the skill set, how would you choose a mentor? Wow, that is a good question. You should have prepared me for that. <laughs> you should no have given more. me this. Given. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> obviously, I would love to have a mentor in in um, in business. Uh, relationally we should just click there must be a personality thing that works i i would be totally frustrated if it was a like a I, I don't even know the personality types a or b with i mean if it was total opposites if i had this quiet person who didn't open their mouth it would probably not work for me um so i think relationally it should yeah, that sounds like uh, personality z yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's not right. Um, I 
think value base. It must be that you must speak out ah. of the same mouth. Definitely, you must have the same values. And if you, for me, my faith is important. So if if we speak out of the same faith value base, it's basis. It's going to be a win win situation because we will have the same kingdom mindset and principles, right. and we'll believe the same things, which is important in business. Um, we believe the Bible that says don't be unevenly yoked. So I don't want to get into partnership or business with people who don't have the same values as I do because I know along the road it's the Oshan Koppa stump and it's not going to work. Um, so nothing against the person at all. It yeah. might be a great mentor, but I have seen we've had a bit, we have a, um, had a business mentor once, um, Ruben. Uh, and he, well, I mean, we had the same values and the same, and it was amazing to be able to tell him when we go through tough times and he can give us another perspective. He actually once said, which was oh, mind blowing. We would, every time we see him, we say, we just want to get to a point where we are independent financially. Cause we always say that we just want to be independent. And he actually stopped us one day and he said, do you really want to be independent? Cause that means you're independent from God. And we were wow. like, oh. We wow. actually never want to be independent from God. We actually always want to depend on God for what we need. And it was such a groundbreaking moment for, for both Heinz and I. And, and now when I hear people say, I want to be financially independent, I want to be, I'm thinking, oh, we always need to have that dependence on God. So I think it, it helps if you have a, a mentor that has that same grit, the same values, the same um, fire, the same end in mind for you. And that they can dream over you and and see what, where you're going. I mean, I think right. that takes that takes a, a, a special kind of person who can who can see where you're going and lead you to get there. Right. Powerful, powerful. That Alita, so you, you were speaking about the support of your husband and you have a husband who is world famous. He's an artist. <laughs> uh, a lot of people you know, want a piece of him. And so I want to know how has it been uh, building a business next to what Heinz is doing as an artist and as a world-renowned person? How, how has that been? And to juggle that with your family and all of that? Um, that's a good question. Uh, you know what? It's also just a lot of grace. I think I've, I've heard once that God will not give you things that, that's above your sphere of grace that you can handle. So I I know, and I've known it from the beginning since Heinz and I got together. I know I was, the, I was the right wife for him and I was the right kind of woman for him because I I would literally, if women want to take photos with him, I will be the one taking the photos. I'm not um, at all insecure about about him being famous um, and and I think that makes him feel secure with me as well so he is an incredible leader and he's an incredible incredibly strong person even though he's not as loud and as like in your face as I am perhaps he would so always listen and always hear but he would always he's very fair as well I don't like that always because I would say this is what happened with this situation and then it's like mm, but my love what about that and I'm like yeah, but my God, kids, this a man, as you know, and like, <laughs> so he he's very wise. I think he's very wise beyond these years, actually, in, in in especially in certain things. So I I promise you, I cannot do my business without him. Although he's not in the office every day, but we if like if the popo hit the fan, I'm like, okay, let's call in the husband. So he literally sat with us because we have this deadline to launch this app next week, and we, he's like, what is your message? Who do you speak to? I'm like. Someone grab a pen. Somebody <laughs> listen to the man of the house. So, um, so it's amazing though. He's not in it. The 24 seven, he is very in it. He, he's, he's doing a lot of things behind the scenes. And I think, I think what makes it amazing is that we are a partnership and we understand each other's roles. It's not as if I'm the CEO and he is working for me. No, not at all. He is as much the leader of this company as I am. He's the, the staff looks up to him. They, they revere him. They appreciate him coming in and taking time in meeting them or how are you doing he, and because he, he does that he comes in and just checks in with everyone is everyone okay so he does a lot of the pr i'm just like the bulldozer who's just like next thing next thing and he's like okay let's just wait how are you doing how's your soul how's your whatever and um, right. so a partnership and understanding each other's roles i'm not expecting stuff from him that i know he's not capable of and he's not expecting that from me so we, we know how we are as parents we know how we are as spouses we know how we are as employers and employees 
I think that is important to understand each other's roles and to um, give each other the space and the grace to move in that sphere. The moment you start right. moving out of that, Dan Salon says, you come to planet in your barn, come as planet, come, let's just stay in our lanes. But um, if you don't have an understanding for that, I think it can cause a lot of friction in a relationship. All right, got it. So that leads me to the next question. I was going to ask you about your working day, and I've got an interesting story about this. A couple of weeks ago, I, I messaged you at, at, I think it was 7.30 or something, or 7 o'clock in the morning, and I was like, Aleta, I need to speak to you about something. And you're like, well, listen, we are still getting up out of bed. We're going to go to the gym <laughs> now, and then we will get to, to work at around 9 or whatever. So I was yeah. really interested on how your working day works because I know you know some people are early morning people, other people work late. What is your and Heinz's daily schedule? What does it look like? Yes, that is so cool that you asked us because we have been um, we have been contemplating our days lately. Okay, so let's just say lockdown and COVID totally screwed us up because right. first of all, we didn't have school for however long. We have an incredible baby who slept through from six weeks. So we didn't have that excuse that we can't sleep at night. So we were Sorry, I don't late. know. Did you, did, you, did you use any medication or was, was we born like that? <laughs> prayer, Papa, prayer. <laughs> that, no, I'll, before, before birth. Um, so, so now suddenly in lockdown, we, we're back to school and then my children are in the second session. So they go to school from 12 to 3. So it's just natural. No that more early mornings. Oh, early mornings that's rather so we would we, and what happened in lockdown as well is because we were alone at home with four children and needing to feed them needing to work make money cleaning the house doing everything which we obviously have a lot of help actually during the day we would only start working at nine at night and then we'll work till two in the morning and then we'll sleep late because the children are sleeping late and then we'll be with them the whole day trying to get in a whatsapp while they're doing something or when you run to the loo and that will be so we were kind of out of a schedule completely but now typically heinz gets up gets up very early he gets up early and then he spends time with god which is amazing i'm like you you go you present our family <laughs> i'm i'm struggling to get up early but um, what we normally do is we we have either I either have Pilates or F45 at quarter past eight in the morning until nine o'clock and then we rush back to get ready. So I'm normally in the office by 10. I, I would right. make my meetings or I had a date with my boy this morning at 10. And then and then I would work late. And then from between 5.30 and 9, it's children. And then at 9, we'll start working again for a little bit. But we have been inspired lately to... Um, to sleep earlier. I I was at a doctor yesterday again, and he's like, if you, you should be in bed by 11. It's not about the amount of hours you sleep. It's about the quality of the sleep. And after 11, your body goes into cortisol, like you, okay. you, you never go into a deep sleep where you should be. So last night at half past 10, I was out, which is a miracle for me. I was like, what's up with that? But it was good. So yes, we have busy full days. And what I've also learned lately, sorry, I speak a lot, Kevin, you, you'll get no a word problem. in right now. We like that. We like that. Carry I, on. I've learned um, recently from a from a, a, an incredible entrepreneur and businessman about blocking off times, which I've never done. And I just realized, okay, if I want anything done, I'm going to have to block it in. That's just what I do. So Heinz and I now need to write a book on marriage. So every day from Tuesday to Thursday, we have from 12 to 2, nobody comes in my office. I put my Wi-Fi off and I get my 2,500 or 700 words in. And then, then I feel productive. I love right. ticking boxes. I love knowing it is done. It is done. Okay, next. Now I can do two hours of app. Now I can do two hours of whatever, of marketing, of social media influencing, of making videos. If I don't block it off, it's not going to happen. If it's like, yes, we'll do it on Wednesday. Mm. Wednesday is going to... Never go there. Yep. Never going to yep. go there. Absolutely. Love it. So so time management, obviously a huge thing, current focus in your life. And I think it's, it's a, it remains a big conundrum for entrepreneurs because we've got so much to do and we want to do even more. But as you say, it's really important to block off some time and, and get the stuff done that you want done. So Aleta, just on that, on that book, I know you can't give us the title, but um, what is that book about? Just repeat that. It's a book about marriage. Yes. We don't have a title yet, so I can't even right. give you a title <laughs> if I want to. <laughs> So um, we we had a we had a like 
incredible natural once again um, opportunity during lockdown to to host a marriage seminar because everybody was in lockdown so at at nine on a was it at nine i think yes on a thursday evening we um we did an hour and a half session with couples and every week we had a different topic and it was incredible we had 500 people or or couples i don't even know we had a lot of people doing the first session and then we had another one and out of that um we were we were um approached by a publisher who said don't you want to just write down your content that you've shared you have the videos already um and we are passionate we are passionate about marriage we I cry when I find out about somebody who's getting a divorce and I just think about the damage and the children and I, I mean I have not even been through a divorce I by the grace of God I believe I'll never go through that but the the pain and the hurt that is caused and so many divorces happen because of a lack of knowledge they just don't know that I can actually deal with this issue and work through it and and we can actually have, flourish in our marriage so it is our heart to just get that message out so we we are both sitting down I literally whatsapp him are you writing are you doing that I, I want to know that because he's downstairs and I'm upstairs we're not in the same space yes where are you I'm at 2500 words and I'm at okay whatever so we keep each other accountable because there is a deadline they want the book at a certain time and if, if we don't do it we're not going to get there but yes we want to see marriages flourish um it's possible we totally believe it once again pride is a big thing people feel like they don't need help i want to challenge you and say you do we all of us are we all have issues all of us have problems we have stuff to work through um, yep. none of us is above help none of us is so it is it is important that we are humble enough to say listen okay i really want to see my my children flourish and my marriage flourish so let's get help let's let's read a book let's go see people that um because there are people that can help you with this absolutely and when do you think let that book will be done um our deadline i think is for the end of june but we will be okay. done probably by the second week in june and then That's i think brilliant. it will be out by the end of the year well done all while managing other businesses as well so um, time, <laughs> <laughs> so let i want to ask you what what motivates you to be an entrepreneur um i don't i'm not sure my husband would say money he would say my love languages are acts of service which i like i like that money. part let's let's, let's have a good money. relationship with money <laughs> Yes, you do have to have a good relationship with money. Uh, Kevin, I think, wow, that is a good question. I, I've never thought about something externally driving me, but if I have to sit down and think, it's probably it's probably family and wanting to get to a place where I literally do make money in my sleep because that's what we, I want to do. I want I, I never want to waste a minute, so that something must be generating something even while I'm sleeping, so that I can know I can rest. But I think getting to a place where I don't need to be in the office and so hands on um, anymore and being able to minister with my husband. My, my dream is always to see, to be in a place where we can travel the world. I want to travel the world with my children. I, I pray to God that it will be possible again with all that's happening in the, in the world. Um, travel the world, being able to minister the gospel, to get the message out to as many people as possible and and to get to that place this needs to happen we need to now lay the foundations and generate the the, the businesses and the income and the ideas to be able to be more free and do what we actually need to do right spreading right. the gospel okay. so Absolutely. yes i think that is what drives me okay all right and tell me about the you know once you have the motivation for a for a new idea how long do you carry on with an idea before you give up on it <laughs> Oh, before you give up. Like, yeah, when do you stop? Like, if you have an idea and it's just not happening, when would you suggest you stop? Wow, I haven't stopped. Does <laughs> <laughs> um, your answer you don't stop at all? I don't stop. You just make it happen. I have okay. literally, um, this past, like, two months have been crazy. I told you earlier that my, my staff is just like that phone, like, create a new email address. We need this at this because... Because there's something else was was born, um, and and a lot of things were born lately, which was just like uh, so, somebody would, for, for example, like for years, to, tell me you should bring out your own clothing line. You should bring. I'm like, I don't have time. I don't have time. Where do you even begin? Where? And then in a in a split second, seeing something 
um, hanging in my closet that I bought a long time ago. I don't even know where. And the pattern is incredible, but the fabric is not so nice. So I don't wear it because the, the pattern is not right for me. Like, okay, let's recreate this in something that works for you. Okay. But other people also want it to work for them. Okay. Let's recreate, recreate it for all the colorings and, 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 and in a matter of days, you have a new brand and you are now doing things with other people. I think, I think. I think I have a gift. Light bulb to, moment. Light bulb moment to identify the right people to partner with. And oh. to without delegating all the work, but but collaborating. Like I bring this to the party and you bring this to the party. How can we both gain from this? And it makes the load a lot lighter because I think many people try to do it on their own. Once again, you can't do it on your own. So knowing even my team now, my team has has so in the last two months done things that they didn't sign up for but they are flourishing because suddenly they realize they have way more leeway and i'm like you've got the vision you've got the job the one will come in and say don't you think we should have that on the website yes make it happen don't you think yes just do it money for my ask right. Franny. just do yep. it and Absolutely. i said to hans this morning i was so proud my my team waited for me to do something over the weekend and it was my child's birthday and i couldn't get to it and i was just like okay monday morning you sit and you do it. And when I came into my office, they were all around the table with all these things on. And they were like, look, you can do it. It's amazing. You don't, you don't need me. So um, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> I think well, it doesn't matter now. It was, it was a good answer. It was a good answer. <laughs> but so, knowing just, how, who to partner with. And yeah, yeah I think that is, that, is a, that is a key thing, is partnering with the right people. Right. We've got a we've got a comment here from Nelly Brunt. I don't know if you know her. She says, "How does Alette manage this all while living with four kids?" Well, having four kids. Well, having four um, kids. Nelly, that is a great question, and I get it often. Um, I think first of all, by the grace of God, I I work from home, so my baby is in my office every now and then, and then I'll focus on her. I'll give her attention. I'll do what she wants. I'll take her whatever. And then, so it's a it's a balancing act. It definitely is a balancing act. Um, and what we also do, like I said this morning, we we have uh, dedicated dates with each child every week. Every every child has a week where they get to sit in the front of the car. They get to feed the dog. They get to bath first, whatever. And then during that week, we have Heinz has an hour with them, and I have an hour. So individually with both parents, they get to have an hour. So it's an hour out of your week. But they feel like they are they are getting the attention that they need in that moment and then we have a lot of help once again identifying the right people not trying to do everything on my own i'm not that mom i'm not the mom who's going to do the, the, the driving around i've got somebody who does that because because i will make money while you're doing that and then we can have food on the table tonight that's that's my mindset so you do what you are good no, at and no, I'm no work no food <laughs> exactly and um so it's it's intentional parenting yes. and um and making the best of of little moments that we have during the day making if they get into my office i mean i so want to if i'm in a zone and they come in from school i that course alles van my own to stop in the dry and like who was your dog? like acknowledging <laughs> you are my child i do love you very intentional yeah. amazing and right. then five minutes later okay so yeah. um it's it's not it's not easy but i am thankful that i have a team of people around me that helps and supports and whoever is available is going to drop the child off etc it's, it's just right. yeah a little bit you're speaking about the team and that's so important that you know mothers who are entrepreneurs understand this I think what you're saying is you are using your gifting to make money and you make enough by using your gifting to employ people to help you with the management of your house. So it's not a case of abdicating your mother responsibilities. It's a case of you, your gifting is not to be a full-time mother. And I'm not, I'm saying that in quotation marks, your gifting is to go out of the world and build multiple businesses. And by doing that, by being in your gifting, you actually amass the right amount of money to be able to afford the help. Because um, a lot of times people feel that, you know, I can't afford the help. You're speaking about help, but how do I afford it? But the problem is yeah. not the fact the affording the help. It's actually 
not being in purpose, not working in, where the magic happens, because where the wow. magic happens, there's provision. And I, and I see that in your life. Wow, it is so true. And I mean, Kevin, we, when we started, I remember um, probably 2010 when my, when my eldest boy was born. Um, and it's difficult to have a baby and try to see clients. It, I mean, it's very difficult. And Heinz kept on telling us we should get an assistant. We should get an assistant. I'm like, dude, we can't afford an assistant. Like, pretty what a dream world you have, but we can't do it. And how supernaturally it happened where, um, and I actually received emails like that often. A student contact me, contacted me from, from Tex University and said she's doing um, consumer science as, a, as a, a degree and she needs intern hours. And I'm like, oh my word, somebody can come and work for us and I don't need to pay them. That's amazing. And that's yeah. how it started. And when she actually finished her internship, she was such a value and an asset because she did stuff. I got to do other stuff that, that really was important. And I could afford her then after that to, to appoint her. And she was my assistant for, I think, seven or something years. So amazing. it's amazing how you think out of the box of how to start off without promising somebody an incredible salary. There's perhaps somebody who just wants to shadow you in your sphere or your job and, and, they you. Can, and you can give them a little bonus or something, but you don't necessarily need to pay them a full blown salary and they can grow. And because they release you from the hands on tiring stuff that takes your time and not making money, it gives you the opportunity to actually make money to afford them. So just start somewhere. And now yeah. we have got a team of five people and three interns and it looks like a crazy house in this place. <laughs> oh, my husband really wants to run away. He's like, oh my word, my house is full of people all the time. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, <laughs> man. Well, it's a, it's a typical COVID office, you know, everyone's at home working. So it's very normal for this for this kind of uh, time for Absolutely. us. So we've got Absolutely. a need there. I think this adds to the conversation. Uh, do you ever have moments or days when you feel overwhelmed and how do you Absolutely. bounce back from that? Anine, Anine is one of my students. Um, okay. and it, absolutely. I, I, I often feel overwhelmed. And you know what? Sometimes I, well, I would get, or I would, I would like over the weekend already think of what's coming next week and what needs to be done and what who's waiting for. And do, do I mean so much for the video? And do I mean so? And I call my social media girl and, and, you had not a video gemaakt for that. And I was like, so, ah! But the clinicals don't is not even means. Um, and you know what? That's also pride. When they don't all gaan oor jou, it's not it's not that. It's taking a breath and then realizing, okay. And then once I start going through the emails, because I'm feeling those five and twenty thousand emails, and you start answering, if you once again just put your mind to it, then it's just oh I guess I like God dear and I get I like after the come from the God dear come near. Okay. It is it is also and I'm struggling with that getting to that place where you, the more time you actually spend with God, the the more productive you are. It's taking a breath and like, I need wisdom and help and just calm me down right about now. And it helps. It's always like, the, oh, I have to have a conversation with my husband where he just brings me back on track. When that is in the other land, because home means I just sort of, and he's like, okay, what is urgent and important? What needs to be done right now? Take a breath. Think about it clearly. Close your door. Just have a moment where you can get compass mentors again. That's what I need in my life. But I, yes, I often feel overwhelmed and and just like it feels like horns what net gaan. It feels like a tolikie is what net. Yeah. We need to just make sense. Put it back in the reins back in. Yep. And it's a, it sounds like you rely heavily on a team. So I want to know about your team. How do you make a decision on who you employ? What what like what do you? <laughs> What are the like the top three things you look for when you employ people? And please don't tell me it's a gut feeling because <laughs> I need to quantify that. I need to understand what that means. Ah, that's a good question. Okay, so um, from from Marissa, the first one that was my intern that became my assistant, she actually moved with us to Cape Town. Then we had Renal. Renal kind of we had interviews. Um, she she kind of just told us she's going to work for us, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> And then like we, had, we had a few others, but the, I think we, when I started with SA Image Academy, um, I, I soon realized we can't just have one assistant now doing my bookings and Heinz's bookings. We, we are going to have to expand. And then supernaturally, um, I had this girl send me an SMS. Say, for example, I think she sent it to me in November. 
I think I started with, a, I heard about taking a company over in September and I think October, November, she said to me, my name is Mia. I got your number from um, Jason, who is a musician who worked with Heinz, like randomly. And I am going to study in Stellenbosch. And if you have any, um, you know of somebody who's got a job, please just keep me in mind. And I kind of thought, okay, I mean, I wasn't in the business of taking in people, so I, I left it there. And then when it came to the point, I'm aware that's Mia. That was Mia. Yeah, oh, look at that. When I came to the point of now the company needed to get off the 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 ground, um, I remembered about Mia. And it it supernaturally, it worked out that her studies didn't work out where she was going to study. And she, in the end, did my course. And she became my go-to girl, my right-hand girl, who's traveled with me everywhere. Then we started working on the app and I trained Sumeri, who is, um, she, I knew her from church and she came to do the course. Just God also did a supernatural work in her life. When she enrolled for the course, I was like, is this you? And she's like, yes, it is me. And she changed, like physically transformed into an image consultant before my eyes, which was amazing. Um, and she came to me a, a month or what after she did the course and I was busy, like I get in a zone. I was busy doing um, house, like I was, um, I could have tafel geskief, because I, I can't op work nie, I make a sock, whatever nie, and I was busy with this table outside, and she was trying to have a meeting with me, and I was just going on with my work, and she said to me, I think I need to work in a team, and just before that, I had a meeting with our app guy, where he said, I need somebody to, to run with this app. I can't wait for you to get back to me about some, somebody needs to take ownership of the app. And when she said that, I'm like, okay, so you are a new app girl. You need to work in a team. I need someone. Let's go with that. So it was as easy as that for me in the beginning. But then in the beginning, um, who else? Okay. So then Mia got married and she left and, and we had, we had little, snippets of people coming in for a short while but with Shanae for example she did my course I met her at a master class in Poch she was the host at the venue where I did my master class in Poch of Strom and when she came in there was this she was dressed to the T she was beautiful and um, I could see she's she's got her things said our life sheets and say weet wat sy and she helped us and she said she wanted to do our course I said I want to make it happen for you that you are able to do our course and um, and she came to Cape Town for the next course in October and I think on the third or the fourth drive or the fifth, I don't know, she spent time with us in the car driving to the venue and in the road. Oh, what actually happened was I made a post. Sumeri was driving. I made a post on social media and Shanae was behind me and she saw the post on social media and she said to me, I know this is important to you. So I'm going to tell you there's a spelling mistake in your post. And I was like, I want you to work for me. <laughs> Literally, I want that. And I, I saw her um, a, a day or two later, I said to her, I want to speak to her. And I said to her, what is keeping you in Porch? Is anything keeping you there? And she's like, no. So I said, so do you want to come and work here? And she's like, yes. And she moved all the way from Porch. And she now made a whole living here. And, and Shanae is our, our um, she, what, uh, she's an S on the disc. I, I don't know what she's right. But she, she's got systems and laces in and she's good with that. We need that because we've got a few extroverts and she's the introvert and she wants that, that done. And then my long assistant, Leticia, had to go. She had she wanted to start her own thing. And I mean, we are all about releasing people. We don't own you. If your season is done and we feel it is done, then let's we'll find somebody else. Although it's always heartbreaking because we always love the people that work for us. Right. Um, and we have the opportunity to work with, with Ace Mary. And Esmeri was as a major in the army. She is louder than life itself. She's extremely funny and witty and sharp. Um, and I was I was nervous about that in the beginning because I mean I'm loud. Sumeri is loud. Yes. We it's a lot of as a you lot of loud. Sound deadening material in the house. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I was nervous, but I, somehow I just knew it's it's the right fit. And and she is incredible with systems. So she wants to write down everything that needs to be done. If somebody leaves, everything must be able. They anybody else must be able to fill in that sh those shoes. I can ask her anything. She's a, an absolute. If I walk in with a bunch of stuff in my arms, she sees I need help, and she will she will release it. She will help me. So. Everybody has their own gifting. And then at one yep. stage, at the end of lockdown, when we had an incredible about, amount of enrollments in our online course, and, and we just had too much work. We just couldn't get to everyone and everything. Um, I said to Sumeri, we need help with at least even if it's social media, just somebody who can make our posts every day because it is 
very time consuming, but it needs to happen. You have to have that. And I said to her, what about Justine? So Justine is a girl who did my online course in America when she was there. And then she moved to Somerset West with the intention to come and work for me, which is incredible. I haven't even Amazing. met her in person. She's also a photographer, which I thought was going to be a great asset for our business to have a photographer who's good with social media and taking photos. Um, and she was here and I said to her, we're going to give you a three month probation. Let's see if we, we work together. She came in in the first month of her being here. She renovated. She, she got us to renovate the whole office space into something that is professional and just right. looks incredible. And while she was literally painting skirtings on a Friday evening at about 10, I was like, so do you want a permanent job? And she's like, <laughs> yes. So I think the team is amazing at the moment. Suri is unfortunately leaving us. She's going to go to Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. And and I know it's also time to release her, even though she's part of the family. She's my, my daughter, I think, loves her even more than she loves me. I'm joking. She'll never. But um, she's she's so a part of my family. She's she's We worship together. She sleeps over. Um, but I know God will also provide the right people. And now I have three yep. incredible interns who just take right. the load off. In my online shop, they send out parcels because that needs to be done. It's like receiving parcels, okay, packing the products, mm, organizing for Percy to come and get it. So it's a whole system. It's a it's a radical machine what the young is behind the scenes. Love it, love it, love it. So, so, so Alita, so, you can choose between skills and character. Which would you choose? Oh, wow. I would probably do character because they yeah. can learn the skills. <laughs> ah, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Oh, wow. Right. Good. Right. Now, right. It seems like uh, Janine's, I think you know Janine, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's, a, there's a plug yes. here for my course as well. Yes. So uh, Janine currently is on um, the, the Life Accelerator course. And I think it happened through um, an interview yes. that I did with you guys. Yes. Uh, so Janine's on there. And then uh, Nelly is asking advice about... Um, what to give women and mothers uh, to get more out of life purposefully using their gifts and talents. Now, Nelly, um, I'm not sure if this is divine. It sounds like it is, but Janine is on the course and she's just yeah. told you what to do. So yeah. there's a life accelerator course and you can go to the Take a Seat TV Academy and look at that. I think that's what Janine is saying. Yeah. All wow. Right. Janine, that's so great to hear that from you. And, and I would definitely say that to Nelly as well. You have to, we, we, you know what, what, freaking mock my court now <laughs> bothers me is when people we think to sit at home and wait for things to happen like at the stony who convert them in the eye for money my father flip dunya what what do you you have to spend money to make money invest in a course with kevin learn what to do get to know yourself he literally accelerates your life that is what it is it's an accelerator life course so he helps you to do, to get to why you were here why why were you made and you won't believe what will happen he like literally is the He's, I said, I fire cracker after your boat. I love the <laughs> that is what's going to happen. It's a, it's not even a lot of money. I, sp I mean, that's what I spoke about with Mahri the other day. People don't want to spend a little bit on marketing on Facebook to promote their products. They're waiting for things to happen, and nobody's going to see your stuff. So you're not going to get anything out if you're not going to put anything in. But you have to put yep. a little in to get a lot out. And and your course is is the first thing that I would say. Do it. Do it. Do it. Because he's going to help you. He's got, he is an incredible mentor, and he can. He has got all the experience and the skills and the character to help you get where you need to be. <laughs> I promised myself this will be all about you today, and now we're going into <laughs> Kevin's courses. But yeah, um, yes, uh, Annalisa, she's a yes, a bonal, borrelne, positive, inspirerende energie wat my dag inspireer. Die eerlijke, mooie en positieve wijze waarop jy jou kennis en wederfaringe deel maak, dit een heerlijke, lekkerde om na jou te luister. Oh, awesome. Dankie, Annalisa. Thank you, Annalisa. Dankie, Annalisa. Weet jy vir jou ken nie, uh, Alette? All right. So let us, I want to get to your brands quickly. Um, really important. I, I mean, when I looked at these brands, I said earlier on, I was I was so amazed. And, and I mean, one of my questions were this morning, you know, how do you get to all this stuff? And I think some of the ladies on the on the on the on the uh, comments have the same problem. You know, how do you get to all of this? I just want to show people, you know, what you've done here. Let me just get that on the screen. So just talk quickly on. Um, sorry, not that one. I'm going to share the the full screen with you 
this one. Just talk to us about the different brands here. So we've got PS at the at the top left. You must tell us what it is. SA Image Academy, a letter Winkler Image Consultancy, uh, Palette uh, Collective and Company, and then there's one more which I'll show you just now. So just talk us through that. Okay. So um, PS is now my pocket stylist, which is the new app that we're launching very soon. We are releasing or um, pre I don't know whatever it pre releasing. Next week. Re stop there. Can I quickly let me just stop there? Can I play, play the video? Yeah, yeah it's an <laughs> so tell me about that. You mean <laughs> that my wife can take an app with her to the mall and she knows exactly what coloring to, to choose from, what makeup to use, what shoes to buy. Is that what it is? That is what it is. Amazing. So, Life changing. So Earlier, when um, when I took over SA Image Academy, that was the first thing I wanted to do is to bring in an app, which we did. We have we have a, a, a app that's working currently, um, but then we wanted to up our game and just make it like next level and go international and sh and show every image consultant. So so how my brain works is I want to be the best image consulting training company, not only in South Africa in the world. So I need to create a product that 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 draws consultants to come and study with me. So what do we have? we have an app nobody else has an app so okay so the one feeds of the other um, and now we're at the point where it's not necessarily going to be people who train with me but will be able to use the app in their different countries because we're going to make it multilingual so you can have it in Portuguese and Spanish and Chinese and what's the other one whatever in English <laughs> so um, so yes it's a tool for image consultants that they can so it creates work for them and then the client needs to see an image consultant because the client wants the app believe me you want the app it's next level friggin amazing um, and then um, where are you now what is that <laughs> It's not the, the app. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Pocketstylists.com. Let me let me put that on. Yeah, it's a belief. I'll, I'll put that on. <laughs> um, yes. So we have this incredible opportunity to launch it next week, and 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 just that just started the fire behind us. So we got our team together, and we are. We are working 24-7 to make this happen, which is quite cool. We have an amazing team. I am so thankful for everyone. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that, the letter. No, not did, a problem. We did a, we did a free plug for someone else as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Right, great. So, so, so let's get to the, um, the, others, uh, the other brands quickly. Um, I'm going to get to that screen. You were busy moving on to the next one. We know so it's a image is the one you discussed. That's the one you started with. Am I right? Yes. So that's the one trading image consultants, um, okay. mainly image consultants. We also have a course, for example, for um, eye uh, optometrists to help them choose frames and colors for their for their clients. Um, Aleta Winkler is my own is my own image consulting company. So it's if I see clients and makeovers and um, and also my shop runs from Aleta Winkler, my online shop where I sell makeup brushes and makeup and skincare stuff and weight loss stuff. Everything that has to do with my business will run from Aleta Winkler. And then Paletta Collective and Co is um, I always knew I wanted to do something with the word Paletta of Palette because my name is literally in it. Like hello. Um, and then this is the one where I am now partnering with designers to bring out ranges of clothing in each color group that is available. So I'm, I have the, the knowledge of knowing what suits you. And therefore, I'm going to create, say, for example, 12 different dresses with different patterns, one in an animal print, one with a banana print, one with a 
flower, one with a whatever, so that everyone in the 12 palettes can get the right dress for them. So yes, and what is awesome, I, I work, I bring a dress with one designer and a shirt with another designer, all in designs that will work with everybody's shape and something that is unique and different and not easily and readily available in the store. Um, and so they only make one thing for me, so it doesn't take over their brand, but okay. we, it's a win-win situation. Yes. Love it. Love it. That's so amazing. It's amazing to see all those brands and Again, uh, where you find the time for all of this is uh, is supernatural, absolutely supernatural. So well done, well done with that. My team, I just give the idea and they make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Alita, I know you're an adventurous person, so tell me what would what would you say is the most exciting experience you've had in uh, your entrepreneurial journey? Oh wow! What's the most exciting moment you've had? Wow, exciting moment. Yeah, like I did. I <laughs> okay, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. Tell me, yeah, just yeah. Some, these are some nice questions to, to end the, the interview with. So next one, three places on the globe that you'd like to work at. Oh, still. Three places in the world that you'd like to work, yeah. Um, oh, let's say Paris. Oh, Wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind New York City for a little while. And thinking of my industry, mm, probably London. Okay, nice. All, all very fashionable cities, eh? Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. All right, and then the top three mobile apps that you can't live without. Mine. <laughs> My pocket stylist. Um, right. That's a good one. Sure. Um, I'm very dependent on Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to just name it as one. And which apps to, oh, WhatsApp, probably. It's my What's method that? of communication. Hmm. Got it. Got it. And then the last one, um, if you were teleported to a, a desert island, what would the three things were, be that you take with you? Oh, wow. A desert island. Must I say my husband? <laughs> you can. <laughs> I think that would be a good start for your book. It will be, it will be a good start because you will also be able to keep me warm at night. <laughs> so right. you can be my blanket and my yes. companion. <laughs> um, oh, wow. What will I take with me? Something to cook with, probably. <laughs> so you, don't, you like cooking? No, I hate it. You, you hate I, it, but I you want to cook. To you have to provide to your husband. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Suntan lotion? I don't know. This is difficult. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Alita, if you if you have to write a book about yourself, mm. what would the title be? Um, who who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a lot like uh, something you would write. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I like that. Listen, but you didn't go to the next screen of the other brands. The last oh, one. Oh, sorry. Let's go back yeah. there then. No problem. But this is yeah, this is this is what's so nice about these uh, channels. We can do whatever we like. We can go back to things. So let's go back there. Ah, oh, you must talk about this. There we go. Yes. What is that? So this is where you asked me to bring my books in. Is so that sleep I production? ZZZZ Productions. <laughs> this is where my lullaby um, products came in. Hold on, let me and get that. Recently, the my ah. Diana, Diana, and Diana. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, um, the Lala Bible also got born out of a place of God. What can we do to increase our income? And he's like, what do you have in your hand? And we have a studio and I can write. And I didn't even know I can write poems for babies. It was one of those when I started doing it felt so alive. And I promise you, Kevin, the, these books were individually written for um, English and Afrikaans, probably in two and a half hours each. Okay. If I had to, if I had to like add up the timing and I won the international best children's book writer of the year in 2018, 
And I sat Amazing. in a meeting with Angus Buchan and professors who wrote the Bible. And this was the best selling book, which was written in two and a half hours. What? And I mean, that is God. If ever. If ever. And I mean, the, it has been reprinted since 2013. So we're going almost to 10 years. I think it has sold 70, 80,000 copies around the world. It's, it's available around the world. Which is amazing. And I mean, that is, that's just God. But that is, once again, what do I have in my hand? Okay. What can I do with what, it? What can I do with it? And he Amazing. will, you put out the seed and he will multiply it, which he literally did. Okay, as now I'm done with the you're using your gifting, you're going to be fine. Absolutely. Find out what your giftings are. Amazing. Go do the course with Kevin. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Aleta, just as a last thought, young entrepreneurs, ladies out there watching you, even men watching you, um, how do I start? How do I just start with my business? How do I get it going? You do Kevin's course. <laughs> <laughs> what do you not understand okay, about that's this? Enough, that's enough. <laughs> Once you've uh, done my course, what do you do? <laughs> this was not the purpose of this exercise, can I just say? I think, I think start writing it down. Just start writing down what are you good at? What would you want to do? Because the moment it comes from here to paper or to your computer, it is already an activation in that. That's what I believe. I think there's a, yes. the moment I send an email to my graphic designer and say, listen, please develop a logo for this. I mean, I don't even have a business yet, but we're already in doing the branding for the business. There is now, now I'm taking the first step. There's it's life there. There's life. There's life. Yeah, it's an activation. It's like yep. you have to do something. So yep. it's not going to help just talking about it. It's not going to help just dreaming about it. They, there has to be seed sown. There has to be put something put into it. And, and with everything that I've done, that is that is it, the first step. And and sometimes, you like I, I have had incredible favor where there is not necessarily money in the first transaction. There is relationship that's being built. You're partnering, like I said, with the right people where I give this, you give this, what can we do together? That is that is something we I teach my image consultants all the time. Like you need great content for image uh, for uh, Instagram because you're an image consultant. It should look good. Partner with a photographer who needs great content and partner yep. with a hair dresser. Because if you all work together, you can all create good content. Like what can I bring my party to? So yep. yes, but Love Obviously, that. doing your course is going to activate and accelerate people. And also your financial course. Your financial course is brilliant in teaching people how to work with money. We didn't grow up in a generation where our parents taught us how to work with money. We, we didn't. I had great parents. I have great parents. They, they taught me how to tithe, which is probably the best principle they could teach me. But that was it. Not about saving and not making debt and not da, da, da. all those things. They can learn from your course. All right. Aleta, it's been an inspiring uh, talk with you. Thank you so much for your time. I am amazed by what you and Heinz have achieved over the last couple of years. I'm excited to be walking this journey with you guys. I'm going to be watching you online, and we're going to have many more of these talks. I'll be checking in with you every couple of months. I want to see the book. I think I think you must launch it on our TV show as well. Oh, I know you've launched it on your side, but please come to ours as well. And uh, let's launch those books. And uh, you, you guys are such an inspiring couple and you raise amazing kids. So well done with that. And, and I hope that uh, you got your, all the dreams that you have are going to come true as soon as possible. I know you, you can't wait. And I pray that it's going to be accelerated in the next five years. So well done and well done to your team. Thank you to all of them who've helped us arrange all these things. And uh, you guys must have a wonderful day. And thank Heinz for you know, all his help as well. And then we'll see you soon. Thank you, Kevin. And we will welcome you. you with open arms when you come this side. Oh, you know yes. I didn't tell anyone that. You are, the, no, you are, said, you are you part of the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Aleta. Thank Wonderful you. Bye-bye.